checking. It works. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending this event. And this is my big pleasure having this speech in front of you. So now everyone speaks about AI. Same with me. But I will tell you how AI analytic in store help consumers and business owners both. So why me? I'm Lena Fleetman and I have a track record in business development and entrepreneurship. I have a master degree in applied math and in computer software development as well. And now I'm a co-founder and chief revenue officer of Dispel. This is software as a service platform for AI marketing in store. So everyone knows about Wi-Fi, about cookies, about MAC addresses and browser history. Google Ads provide a targeting advertisement for us every day and we consider it valuable and meaningful. And uh, this is an integral part of our lives. But I know that some people are still scared about audience analytic offline. They might think about Big Brother, but this is far true of reality. And I'm here to dispel the myths. First of all, data is collected not to spy on you. It is used for useful things, for customer experience increase, customer experience and customer engagement. It is also used to tailor messages in store. It is used for store and layout optimization and inventory. Secondly, data is collected in non-personalized way. No personal data is collected, never. We might collect data due to regal regulations and technology limitations we can store only anonymous data, aggregated data, so nothing in common with identification. Data is collected not with magic waves and not with telco providers. D different sensors are used to collect those data in store and only aggregated data is sent into the cloud. Then, government neither NASA are not interested in audience analytic offline, at least so far. They are retailers and brands, those who are interested in those data to increase their sales. And data are used by marketers and data scientists specialists to work better with their customers, to increase customer engagement and customer satisfaction. That is, let us have a look how technology works. That is very simple and legal, like I said. Different sensors are used to scan stream on a fly and erase the set of anonymous attribute of every person, like age, gender, emotions, involvement rate. We also know the time, how long person spent in front of specific sensor and the total time in store. Different sensors in store exchanging the information and create a customer journey map and also the increasing rate. And at the end of the day, retailer gets the full customer profile, including the number of visitors, the exact number of visitors, without no repetitions, without employees in it, and also engagement rate from visitors into engaged visitors and from visitors into real customers, and al also the bonds traffic. So they will know for sure who entered the store and didn't buy anything. But what is the reason? And we are GDPR compliant. So technology works in a legal field and we care about privacy. We stream audio, stream, video stream on the fly and select the set of anonymous attributes in real time, instantly. Technology works at the point of sale, at the edge, it works locally. Only aggregated data sent to the cloud to promote dashboard, to present dashboards and visitor insights. So let me give you a few examples of how it could be beneficial for business owners and for consumers as well. All you know about Amazon Go, this is the store without cashiers. It works 
like this, as simple like this. Men enter the store, scan QR code via app, take some, grab some food, some products, and leave. Sensors store this data and send it to payment system and to merchandising system. Everything works automatically, and you can enjoy the autonomy and the absence of queue. So it's very useful for us. But you probably know that some of Amazon Go stores are closing now. That is because the technology is very expensive, but the concept is beautiful, isn't it? So if, if, what if the technology will be cheap and affordable? The other example was presented with SPA. This is a grocery retail, the international one. And they presented the targeted advertisement content inside store. So since sensor no age and gender of person, it provides the special targeting content on the digital screens. Because it is tailored, it helps to increase sales at least on 10%. And this is a very impressive number, isn't it? In public spaces, we also have such examples of targeting content and increase of brand awareness. That one was presented with Canadian publisher and they tried different pieces of content for different customer segmentation in different locations and in bring them brand awareness and loyalty. And the last, but my favorite one, it's a pose. <laughs> you will see that this one about the Canadian publisher. Ah, uh, sorry. Just a uh, uh, quite clicks. <laughs> a few clicks is needed to make it run. So this one is about how to make the brand zones inside store to work more effectively. You might saw there are a lot of screens embedded into brand zones, but usually they even doesn't work, or it is a black screen only on it. We use sensor to understand if someone is staying in front of screen and we instantly change and co content on call to action that attracts the attention of people and persons starting to interact with screens. Then it is known that mostly men prefer the rational content and women prefer the more emotional ones. That is why here we present the information about the pricing, about the savings, and the functional equipment of this device. And this is my favorite one. <laughs> this is about Coca-Cola, and this is very emotional. This Coca-Cola, they use screens to engage their customers, to encourage their customers to smile. And on exchange on their smile, Coca-Cola provides a special promo discounted offer QR code. Of course, it increases customer loyalty and brand awareness, and it is very human and very kind to people. That is why I'm saying that AI benefits both consumers and end users' businesses. And what is the future of AI in retail? Actually, the future is today. AI in retail is legal, is friendly, and cheap. You will be surprised that nowadays it is affordable even for small and medium businesses. And costs are like the same. For one sensor, it could be approximately 40 euros, like annual subscription. That means for store, like a medium size, you need up to five sensors, and it will cost just 200 euros yearly, and because it increases sales significantly, the return of investment will be 1 to 100 percentage, and the payback period just two months, very fast. And despite the development of digital world, this is reality around us, surrounding us. And people miss the real understanding and real interaction between each other. That is why people come back to shopping mall for retail stores in a real world to make a shopping, to have an entertainment. And that is why it is very important for retailers use AI to encourage people and to make their feelings even more interesting.
That's it of me for the moment. So this is the session for questions and answers. Thank you, Lena. It really is interesting to see so many industries and how AI is impacting them. And I think retail is one that maybe because we're so engrossed in the digital world, we maybe not think about so much, but there is so much potential there. Uh, let's see a question we have up on Slido. Can the tracking equipment recognize a person who makes a repeated visit? Yeah, thank you very much. I wonder who this question come from. The Great, this is a very much sophisticated one. And not an easy one, because in terms of technology, it is possible, it's very easy to do. But based on legal regulations due to GDPR, we are just not allowed to recognize people during a long amount of time. So it means that we store data during one day, during the session. And, but if we have a customer concern, we can do it. Interesting. Anyone else have any questions before we close off the session? Yeah, Do you think this mm -hmm. can work in an e-commerce environment as well? Yeah, definitely. And this is actually the link between e-commerce and offline world, offline retail. Because in e-commerce, you have the whole funnel of visitors into people who were interested and spent decent time on the decent pages. And we are doing the same at the offline. And we have a, a way to link the online customer profile with their profile online. And we are filling this gap. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lina. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our sessions. Let's give a round of applause for Lina.